uh, Jerush Hey, the fifth Jerush of Parshat Hay Sarah. This one is a little bit more intricate in detail, a little bit more uh, unique in that regard. But in, 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 as an introduction, I'd like to offer uh, or bring the bring everyone's attention to the idea that the Zohar Kodesh mentions about Marat HaMachpelah. We know that Marat HaMachpelah was you know, unique to Avram Avinu, it has a special place, but the Zohar Kodesh says that many years before Avram Avinu actually going to buy the, uh, Marat HaMachpelah, many years before, the Zohar Kodesh says that Avram Avinu actually knew about it and heard about it, and he bought it many, uh, he, he was thinking about it already then. The question is, he already then, Avram Avinu, already saw the unique aspects of Marat HaMachpila many years prior to Asara's passing. The question is, what about Ephron? How did Ephron not see that? So the point, the, the Zohar Kodesh mentions, uh, without going into intricate detail about what he saw, but he basically, it's a matter of perspective. Right? Based on our, the, the person's greatness and the person's, based on the person's spiritual level, that we can see two, two things, the same thing, the two aspects of the same coin can be seen, viewed differently. So Avram Avinu saw uh, the Zohar mentions Adam Arishon, he mentions Gan uh, the, the Zohar mentions Gan Eden and many other things. And of course, it's the, that's because Avram's spiritual level, he sees the greatness of Marat HaMachpelah. But uh, Ephron Achiti, who you know, was just not just a regular person, he looked at Marat HaMachpelah as just another Sadeh, just another field, or just another you know, piece of real estate. So that's just a, something to, for us to teach, about, teach us about perspective about the same area, about Marat HaMachbila, and that will introduce us a little bit to what is going on with this whole idea of the sale. So this is Jerush 5 uh, on Parshat uh, Chayesarab. The Pasuk says, This is talking about the purchase of Avram, Avinu, uh, Avram Avinu's purchase and business dealings with uh, with Ephron, but uh, in advance or in preparation for burying Sarah Imenu. So it says, uh, "I will give you the I've given you the field and I'll, and also the Mara and I'll give it to you in in front of everyone." How could it be that first of all we look at the Sukim, we see that Avra, that Ephron was kind of really. Um, you know, being very generous, and he and then then he, t- he said he would give it to him as a field, and then he wants to t- then he wants to sell it, right? So the question is, how could he? You know, what, are you either trying to give it as a gift, or you're trying to buy it, what, or sell it? Which one is it? You can't be both. So he says that. So he says that in in front, what the many of the mefarshim say is that when he wanted to give Ephraim wanted to give it to him as a gift, he didn't say that. He only said that in front to counter what Bnei Chet were saying is that in case so that they would not come the next day and say that they they were going to come to Avram and say Mishum Dina Devar Mitzra. They're going to say as the law of adjacent properties. They're going to say is oh well if the Gemara in, 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 in Baba Batra and many other places and Baba Metzia uh, mentioned the idea of Bar Mitzra, which is basically that my field is connected to yours, so really, that should be mine. And so, uh, in front of Benechet, Ephron says, no, no, this is a gift, it doesn't belong to anyone else, and therefore Benechet can't come back later to say, oh wait, Avram, you know, Ephron, after he passed, he really didn't mean that, it's it's actually ours. Right? Ephron, that's why he said, in view of the children of my people, meaning in front of my, in, I've given it to you as a gift. In, your, in their eyes, I'm giving it to you as a gift so they can't come back and take it back. And he says, right? when, it, when it, the, law of, the law of the Bar Mitzvah, meaning the adjacent property of the neighborhood, the neighbors, you can't, in the laws of being a neighbor, you can't take back something that was given to them as a gift. But it, however, Ephron later, if you look at the Sukim later, it says, but between you and me, between you and me, Avram, you know, what is 400 what is 400 shekel right so he says privately there would be some sort of exchange of money so now we kind of uh, begin to unfold this kind of another layer of what's going on with this business deal so, so he says mm-hmm. says this doesn't make sense right avram should have given all the money to ephron privately Right, Right, the Right, so if we look at the psukim, and this is again, it shows you the greatness and the under and the intricate focus and the, and the detail that Zer, the Zerushim Shonda takes 
every pasuk and every word and an, an, analyze every word. If we look at the psukim, it's clear that it seems to me, at least based on him, based on the Zerah Shimshon, it seems that Avram Avinu took the money and all the money and the dealing of the money was was known to everyone, meaning the 400 shekel was not just a private, you know, behind closed doors kind of agreement, but rather it was done in some sort of, B'nai Chet knew about this business dealing. So he says, even though we said that oh, regarding the law of Bar Mitzvah, meaning the neighbor explanation, it's meaning that it was a gift to Avram and therefore the B'nai Chet don't have any sort of uh, argument or don't have some sort of statement claim on the land. It says, if Avram wanted to purchase, the, if he really wanted to purchase, he should have gone to Ephron first. Then, then if he really wanted to get it from Ephron, so go Ephron first. Why do you have to go even to deal with Bnei Chet? That was in order to get their permission before. Right? He sort of says, why do you go first to Bnei Chet? If, if he, it, what, what the Zerv Shavishon is saying is, if you really want to get the land as a gift, so go first to Ephron and get it as a gift. Why does he have to go first to Bnei Chet, then Ephron, and come back and then make a business deal? Right, so he says, our first question remains and becomes even more difficult as he says that if for once they already have permission for Avram to purchase the field, then Ephron, no, there's no more reason for Ephron to give it to him as a gift. Once they said, yes, we agree that it's going to buy, that we're, we're willing to sell, so fine, then it's done. Then there's no reason to go to Ephron and say, okay, give it, for Ephron to say, all right, give it to me as a, uh, I'll give it to you as a gift. It's either we say, right, the, the, what the Mufarshim are saying is either the reason that the reason that Ephron gave it to a gift as to Avram was so that there would be no claim of Bnei Chet later on, but now we have we, we said that Avram saw this issue by getting the consent of Bnei Chet first, and then they were then there's no reason for everyone to pretend that it was a gift. So we have like basically he's saying is that the first parish is a nice one to say that Bnei Chet would have no claim because it's a gift. That's nice. But the point is that if Bnei Chet agreed to, to the business deal, meaning they were willing to buy to sell it to Avram, so then why does Ephron afterwards have to say, I'll give it to you as a gift. So that's that's his question. So then there's one more difficult that they ask. Oh, Mao by Yakum stay Ephron. Right? If you look, why does it say that it literally was confirmed or rose, or Vayakum means rose up, right, as, as, as to be as part of the purchase? Afal Pisha Rashi, Piresh Kumai Talo. Rashi says that in, Midrash, in some sort of Bidrashic sense, it says that it was elevated from the style of the feel of the commoner, kind of, kind of going back to what we mentioned as the introduction of the Zohar, right? That, that this, the field, from Ephron's eyes, the eyes were just simple, the field was just a simple field in Ephron's eyes. But Avram kind of elevated back to the status of Marat HaMechbelah and the significance that it calls out the Varzech Beur, right? The matter nonetheless requires some sort of explanation as to what does it mean by Yakum? I mean, why, is it, why we have to use the word elevated? The Od, and another difficulty, uh, which is again, another beautiful component of what the Zerah Shemshon is all about is it shows us the many aspects and questions and layers that sometimes we view Psukim so many times we don't even think about it. He says, Right, if we look in the Psukim later on, as it says, Later on in this week's Parsha, we learn about Avram Avinu's passing, and there it says that the, the Pasuk says that Avram bought it from Bnei Chet, but that's not the case. He bought it from Ephron. So why does he mention the fact that he bought it from Bnei Chet in this pasuk? Sorry, he mentioned the pasuk later on. I'm sorry, the purchase that later on in the pasuk. Uh, and then if we look at the pasuk, um, Right, it says that's in in, in Parakaf Hay, and then if we look later on in Parshat Bayechi, it says Avram kanesed me Ephron. There it says he purchased it from Ephron Achiti. There's two verses. The two psukim seem to contradict themselves. Either they, Avram Avinu bought it from Bnei Chet, or he bought it from Ephron, but it can't be both. So that's why Zer Shimshon is again showing his greatness and his understanding of the different psukim and understanding the anal- the, the words and how each word that is uh, mentioned in the Torah is obviously there's a reason for it. So he has a couple of questions. The first question is, why is it that he gives it to, why does Ephron have to give it to him as a gift? Because if you give, if the, if the sale was public knowledge, then there, once it's a sale, it's a sale, then Ephron doesn't have to come back and say it's a gift. Because once Bnei Chet agreed to the idea that uh, it's it's a, it's a, they, they agree to the purchase. There's no other, that once it's a purchase, it's, it's done. And why does Ephron have to then say it's a gift? And then if, if, if it's a gift, then 
the purchase is if if it's a gift from Ephron, then the gift they have no they, they have the Bnei Chet have no claim. The second question that he asks, which is what is the word Vayakom? Why does it mean that it kind of elevated itself? What does that mean? That should it be Vakana? It should be really, uh, you know, it should be used a more a better term of that, it, that the purchase was, was done. Some sort of word that kind of signifies purchase or cl closing the deal as opposed to Vayakum, which means really to elevate a rose, right? And then the third question he asks is if you look at the light, later psukim, both in this week's Parsha and in Parsha Vayichi, those two psukim, the one at the end of this week's Parsha, it, it says that Avram purchased the land from B'nei Chet, and in, in, in Parsha Vayichi, it says, wait, I, it says he purchased the land from 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 Ephron. So which one is it? So there, there's another contradictory. That's a contradiction. That's the that's the second dif, another difficulty. And the last one, it says, "Lam lo kara vayikan Avraham et asadem et Ephron bechesef arba mitzrekel." Why didn't it say at the end? Why is it not written in the pasuk that says Avram bought the field from Ephron for four hundred shekel? Kamoshe katu be David vayikan David et agor and bechesef shkalim chamishim. Right? Why doesn't it say ela katav yishkol Avram leEphron shenirah shelo bedar kinyan natanalo natanalo? So it says. Then we have an and we have a question. He says. Another great point is that, like we mentioned, and similar to the second one, kind of like an addition to the second question, is why does it mention the fact that Avram says, "Here's the here's the money, and now the purchase is done." Now the seal, like like we, he brings proof, the Zerushim from brings proof from Tanakh, where David Melech actually buys uh, for fifty whatever fifty shkalim, and he actually buys. And the word and the pasuk says, "Vayikan," but he purchased. So why doesn't the pasuk mention here that the, that the fact that Avram actually purchased it? So he's asking. Several very great questions about this entire build, a business dealing that's going on, and many all of them are surrounding the idea of is there's a this concept of a business deal, and it, it doesn't really show us that the business deal actually took place. And in fact, it shows us that in some places it's talking about it as a gift, and some places it's talking about a business deal. Which one was it, and why not? talk about the business deal as a final business deal instead of just trying to kind of dance around the subject. So in order to resolve this issue, that uh, the that the Zerah Shemshon raises, or the many issues that the Zerah Shemshon answers, or questions and raises, he says there's an, a, a whole idea, and in in this is in Gemara in Kedushin, it says, Rav Gidil have a mahapich bahi ara, azel rabba abba zabina, Azel Rav Gidel, Kabli Le Rav Zara, right? So he says there's a whole story. The story is in the Paragimel of the Kedushin, and Daf uh, Nun Tet Amud Aleph. And it mentions that basically Rav Gidel was making efforts to buy a piece of land, and then he went to Rav Abba to buy, and uh, Rav Abba went and bought it first. So the Rav, Rav, once he learned, once Rav, Rav uh, Zira, Rav Zira, uh, once Rav Gidel learned about this, he went and complained about it to uh, Rav, he went, went to complain to Rav Zeira, and Amar Le, my time of Marhachi, why did you do this? Amar Le, Lo Yadana, I didn't know that Rav Gidel was go going to purchase the land. Basically, there was a conflict. One person, uh, Rav Gidel was going to, uh, was, Rav Gidel was, Rav Gidel was going to purchase a piece of land. Rav, Rav, Rav Yabba went and under, uh, kind of undermined him and bought it beforehand, before he was able to finish the, the deal. This happens all the time. And nowadays, when someone is in the process of getting a mortgage or whatever, it is, someone else comes in and buys the land. Obviously, it's not the right thing to do. But here, what, what we see in the Gemara, it happened already. My time, Avad Marhaki, why, why would it happen? Like, why, why did, you know, did you do this? So Rav Abba says to him, I really didn't know that Rav Gidel wasn't trying to purchase the land. Had I known, of course, he was never going to purchase it. Like that, you know, the two people would have said, if I knew, I didn't know. If I knew, I wouldn't have done it. So he says, Let's go. He says, now to the situation. Let's, he says, Rav Yitzchak persist, persisted and he says, let me give it back to him. Amar lei, zabuni lei, lo zabuni lei. I will not sell it to him. The ara de kamaitahi. For it's the first piece of land that I ever owned. Lo He says, it's, he says that uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell it to him because it's my first piece of land. The Gemara mentioned, seems to say that it's not a good simana milta. It uh, reminds us of what we what we do on Rosh Hashanah, it's also called the Simana Milta, the Simana, the Simanim, right? So it's not, it, it's not good luck, it's not good fortune to buy the first piece of land uh, that you ever, to sell off the first piece of land you ever own. It's something that people kind of have a connection to. We we see it nowadays too, people who are businessmen, also they have that, like that first storefront, they always keep it even though it may not be the one making the most money because it's the first one, it's not a good idea. Ibai Instead, if he wants it, but matana nishka, let's give it to him as a gift. Meaning, Rav Gidil lo nachitlai. Rav Gidil would not accept, would not enter the property. He would not accept the land. Rav Gidil said, 
I'm not going to go. It's nice that you give me a gift, but I don't want a gift. I feel uncomfortable. So what happened? The land laid fallow. Lomar nachitla, velomar nachitla. So at the end, Rav Gidel did not enter because he did not wish to take a gift. Because we know that sone matanot ichia, a person who takes or despises or pushes away gifts, he's the person who's going to really be a live a long life. And Rav Abba did not enter because he did not want to. He didn't. He didn't want what should have been rightfully gone to Rav Gidel. So mikaria aria rabban, and thus became basically the land that was called the land of the rabbinic students. Adkan. So he's saying is that the, basically what happened is they, in, in essence, even though they didn't agree to it or they didn't mention it, that what happens is the land become basically the land for the Chachamim. It came kind of like an open open for everyone. And that land became so, it, the fruits and everything around it became known as the land of the of the, of the the Rabbanan, of the students. Now we can understand, if we look at, go back to the story of Ephron and Abraham, we can now kind of understand what's happening. And this is, again, this shows us the greatness of what, how uh, Azera Shemshon's thinking and his understanding of Gemara and his holding of Gemara and understanding of different topics. It says here, here too we can explain, when we look at the story now, he says, Ephron first told Abraham that he would give the, the Marat and to him as a gift. He didn't want to sell it. It was not a good, it was not good, it was not a good luck for him. It was, it was viewed to him as it would be not considered right to do it. It seems to him, right? And then obviously we know that Avram was such a, a level of uh, so he uh, obviously we know Avraham was at a level of tzaddikut that he didn't want to give it as a gift. He didn't want to receive it as a gift. So because of his tzaddikut, he says, "No, no, I'm not going to take it as a gift. I can't do that." Right? We all we, we kind of understand the familiar. We are familiar with these kind of things. Oh, I want to give you a gift. No, I don't want to take a gift. Kind of thing. So it seems to imply. Obviously, the zeresim shonim seem to imply that this piece of ma'arat machbila was Ephron's either first or close to one of his first pieces of land, because otherwise, why would this whole idea of, I want to give it to you as a gift, because it's not Siman Milta, it's not a good Siman. But either way, we understand that Ephron didn't want to give it to him as a gift, and Avram didn't want to accept the gift, because it wouldn't be considered a good to sell off. For Ephron, it wouldn't be considered good to sell off the piece of land, because it's probably one of his first pieces of land. And Avram didn't want to accept it as a gift, because he's not a person that accepts gifts, right? Amar lo, Eretz Arbamel, check el kesef. He said, the, the land, he, he, Ephron said to him, you know, listen, let's, let me explain to you. The land is worth 400 shekel between you and me. Ramaz lo shoviakar, he said, he, kind of like a hint. He says, it's 400 shekel. You know, if I really were to sell it, it's going to be 400 shekel. But I'm not selling it, because that's not who I am. So that would give him the amount to not as an actual purchase. So that way, what was going on here? Ephron says, listen, the value of the land is 400. I can't tell you that it's worth, I can't tell you the actual part purchase price because that it would then be a business deal and I'm not allowed to, me, Ephron, can't go against my business deal because it's a piece of land that it, it wouldn't be good luck, considered good fortune for me to sell the piece of land that is, I guess, his first piece of land. And Avram, Avraham, right? He did, He said basically, he says he didn't give the money as actual payment for the value because he didn't. Ephron said he didn't give you the actual property value. He didn't want to make it an actual business dealing. So he said, and that's why it's never written the word kinyan. There's no actual kinyan here, even though we may in other mafarshim and other. Uh, explanations, you may understand that there is a Kenyan here, but in this case, as Zer Shimshon is understanding, it is not actually, and actually there's no word of Kenyan here because it wasn't actual a Kenyan. One, in, in, when there's a Kenyan, when there's an actual purchase, you say the land is worth 400 shekel, I give you 400 shekel, you give me the deed to the house, and it's done. In this case, because there, because Ephron, this was his first piece of land, he didn't want to sell it because it's considered misfortune. So he, Avram says, okay, I can't take it as a gift. So he says, well, if you can't take it as a gift, I just wanted to let you know that the land of the, the land is worth approximately 400 or so uh, shekel. And therefore he says, okay, I'll give you the, I'll give you the land, I'll give you the value of what you just told me. It doesn't tell you the actual, uh, I don't know the actual land or I can't tell you the actual purchase price of the, of the land. And that's why it doesn't ever, it never mentions the, the idea of Kinyan as is written, because the money was never given as an actual purchase. Just saying is, here's 400 shekel to make me not feel like it's a gift. So, right, so I'm giving you, I'm not giving you a gift, I'm just giving you the value of something you're close to the value of the piece of land, so that way it's not a gift, but it's also not a purchase. I'm just giving, I'm leaving it on the table kind of thing. So now we understand why Ephron did not kind of renege on his original same statement that it was a gift, and there was no actual sale. So now he's, now we can understand, and this is where the Zerashim kind of filters or kind of finishes off his 
all the other questions he has. Now that we see that, our, that Ephron immediately declared that he was giving this gift as a, as a gift, he relinquishes ownership. When Avram was unwilling to accept it, he did not acquire it. It becomes what? It becomes sort of owned. As soon as Ephron says... As soon as Ephron said it's a gift, so Ephron kind of relinquished his rights. Avram doesn't accept it as uh, as a gift, so now it's kind of like it belongs basically it's public land to Bnei Chet, right? That becomes Hefker to Bnei Chet, Kiyahi the Rav Gidel, just like Rav Gidel. That's why it says the Pasuk says that it became that when, when we look later on in the Psukim, it says. He bought it from Bnei Chet, right? He, he, he gave the money to Ephron. It was considered as though he acquired the field from Bnei Chet, meaning the way that Zerush Mishon is understanding, again, beautiful understanding of the whole concept, is that what happened is once Ephron takes the land and says, I'm giving it to you as a gift, he relinquished the rights from it and now becomes public, basically no man's land or becomes property belonging to Bnei Chet. Avram gave money. He says, I'm not taking a gift from you because I'm not allowed. It's a, uh, He says, okay, here's 400 shekel just in case, you know, the value I'm just giving so it's not a gift. Okay, it's kind of like, it sounds like a little bit of a loop or a little bit of uh, back and forth, but it, it really makes sense, right? So ever that we can understand all the different contradictions of the Psukim. Everyone says, I'm giving it to you as a gift. Once he says that, it's given to Avram as a gift. Avram says, I don't want it as a gift. So now it becomes no man's land. And then Avram says, here's 400 shekel in lieu of the gift. So that way I'm not taking a gift. And now it becomes, that's why the Pasuk later on, it says, he bought, he bought the money, he bought the land from Bnei Chet, because the land was officially Bnei Chet's land because Ephron had relinquished his right. And since there was neither, since in this specific situation there wasn't a full gift and a full purchase, right? Now he goes back to the question that we asked, why does it say Vayakum? Because there was never a full Kinyan in either direction, right? So he says, For a transfer to Avram's possession, once it said it was, once he gave the money, once he gave the money to Ephron, since he didn't really purchase the field from Ephron, because it doesn't say, right? It doesn't say, he never bought it because it didn't belong to Ephron. So that's part one, meaning he took, he, Ephron relinquished his rights. So there was no full purchase or full gift from Ephron's side. And there was never a full purchase from Bnei Chet's side because the money that Avram gave was not the actual value. And it wasn't a, what didn't belong to Bnei Chet, it was a, it was kind of like a no man's land. It was public property. So he didn't buy it from Ephron because Ephron, he wasn't willing to, there was no Kinyan there, right? And there was no Kinyan from Bnei Chet. So he, he kind of, but he, in some ways he gave money in lieu of the land. It wasn't an actual purchase. So what do we say is that basically, so that's why it says, Vayakum Asadeh, meaning it was confirmed Right, so it becomes it kind of rose up to become Avraham's, but it doesn't. It didn't actually. There was no actual business dealing, uh, and it, it didn't become a actual business dealing with a tender and like a whole deed because that was it, it had a different status. So he says another solution to this whole idea. Maybe he says, "Right, we could have offered another another answer." He says that Bnei Chet could have said, "Listen, that your your claim that, that, that Bnei Chet could have said that claimed that the, based on the law of this property is adjacent to ours, right?" So he so by. The crash Avraham Kanasadem He said we consider that although Avraham, as though uh, we consider it as though Avraham bought the land from the land from Bnei Bishum Hachi Kativ Asada Asher Kan Avraham Bnei is therefore we written that that that's why the pasuk says later. Uh, from, uh, is not written from Ephron because it was the, as though Avram also had had also bought it from them. The love hachi and kinyan kinyan no me Ephron kolum. So uh, since otherwise, without accepting their uh, permission, right, his 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 acquisition or his purchase would have from Ephron would have been ineffective. Now we can understand. Although we previously said that Avram did not purchase the field, nevertheless, since in truth. Ephron lo si like Yadav Yemenu el Kadeshi is kedah by Avram. The only reason that Avram, uh, that Ephron relinquished the right, his ownership of the field was so that Avram could acquire it. Vot shekibel kesef to Murotan. Ephron received money from it. Katav kra achar kach beparshat veichish shekanam Ephron. So he says that what basically all the psukim now makes sense. Now in in, in this week's part in, in this week's parsha in the beginning it says that there's back and forth in 
negotiation because Ephraim basically does. He says, it's a gift. Avram doesn't want to get the, get the gift. So he says, well, what's 400 shekel among friends, right? So he, that implied to Avram that the value of the land is 400 shekel. And he gives 400 shekel to Ephron, not as a gift. But he says, in lieu of the gift, here's 400 shekel. So that already shows that Ephron was relinquished his rights. The, the land becomes Bnei Chet and explains why Avram had to go through Bnei Chet first because he first he wanted to see if he can buy it from them first. And then he says, no, go to Ephron. Ephron says, I don't want to sell it to you. I want to give it to you as a gift. Avram says, I'm not allowed to get, receive a, a gift. And Ephron says, but I can't sell it to you because it's my first piece of property, as we mentioned, the Gemara in Kedushin in uh, Nuntet. And so the Gemara there says that it's the first piece of property you should never really sell. So he says, well, I give it to you as a gift. Avram doesn't want a gift, but he says, well, it's 400 shekel. What, what's 400 shekel among friends? So Avram understood that to be the price of the land. So he gives 400 shekel in lieu of the gift. And now Avram has the land. But Bnei Chet say, listen, we can still, in, in, according to the halacha, we could, in theory, have you know, we have rights or a claim to the land. Avram says, no, no, no. Once Ephron relinquished his rights, I'm buying it from you, and therefore I'm giving you the money in lieu of the land. So he gives the money to Ephron, and now Ephron says, well, here's the money in lieu of the land. And so now basically what happens is, now we can understand why one place in the Pasukim later on in this week's Parsha, it says he buys it from Bnei Chet, and another Pasukim later in Parsha Vayichi, it says that he buys it from uh, buys it from Ephron. In other words, he actually did buy it from him, right? In some ways he bought it, or there was some sort of transfer of money from, from uh, Ephron, and in some ways there was transfer of money or some sort of you know, arrangement that created the relationship between Ef, uh, between Avram, Ephron, and Bnei Chet. What do we learn from this? Well, first of all, we learn the um, the value of making sure that a business deal is very is clear and 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 and. Um, and, and very precise, and there's a deed and everything, a contract and everything else like that. That's the first thing. Second of all, we see the level in which detail uh, that Avram Avinu went to to make sure that every aspect of Marat HaMachpila, which we mentioned at the beginning, the quoting the Zohar, the Zohar Kodesh mentions the great aspects of uh, of Marat HaMachpila. He mentions the, the greatness of Marat HaMachpila that Avram saw and Ephraim didn't. And therefore, uh, Avram Avinu wanted to make sure that there was no way to understand or maybe mis misinterpret the purchase of Marat HaMachpila or the, the acquisition of Marat HaMachpila in any way, shape, or form. So therefore, what did he do? He made sure that in all aspects, it's confirmed as there as Avram Avinu's land. There's no claim from Bnei Chet because Bnei Chet, he bought the land or he, you know, the land was acquired in some way to Avram by Ephron. He was given to him as a, uh, a, a not as a gift, but as some sort of, uh, you know, a gift with, in, in lieu, with some money in lieu, uh, in lieu of the gift. And also by Bnei Chet, he, get, he purchased it from Bnei Chet because he gave the 400 shekel that they, that money goes to, even though it physically went to Ephron, it was actually for the land to be given to Bnei Chet. So we just really understand, first of all, we, uh, another thing we see from here is the beautiful, the, the greatness and the, the understanding and the various aspects and connections between various who came around Tanakh that t t teach us about the Zerah Shimshon's understanding and knowledge, vast knowledge, but also understanding the intricate and under importance of looking at the psukim and saying why these words and why these specific words and why these mention these words are mentioned here and later on these words are mentioned here to understand the connection the connection the relationship and really trying to kind of, if you will, take words out of different psukim and really try to put them together and say why these psukim are related to Avram Avinu in this week's Parsha and then later on this week's Parsha and then Parsha Vayichi, we kind of understand Built the building blocks of what happens when, when Avram Avinu and how the Torah is written, we understand the greatness of what the Zerah Shimshon understood and, and the layers in which he was able to kind of create these beautiful Torahs. Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and we hope to be back live next week.